So we're going to jump right into this. Um, but before I do, this is a message. I have to just be honest with you. I have a title for this message. It's called, What Do You See? Um, but I want to give uh, honor to the person I heard it from before I preach it, because I got a whole little different twist to it. But I went to uh, my good buddy, Pastor C's uh, church anniversary and uh, pastoral anniversary a few weeks ago, and Pastor Monica Lewis from Free Ministries preached this message, and it rocked my life. Uh, and as she was preaching it, and I was reading through the scripture, the, this message jumped out at me. Um, and so I'm putting my twist on it, of course. Um, but I want you to hear this message because I believe this is a message that God is trying to speak to his church right now. So my thought for our sermon is this, what we focus our sights on determines what we see all around us. What we focus our sights on is what we see all around us. I never forget way back when we used to go camping with our teenagers. The parents were brave enough to let them come stay in the woods with us. So for all of you that are in here that used to let us take your kids into the woods, thank you. We had a blast. Um, But I'm going to tell on us for a second. Uh (laughs) One time, one of my leaders, not going to mention any names, Bruce. um, (laughs) He's not even in here now. He's probably with the teenagers right now. Bruce took a group into the woods on an adventure late at night. And a couple of us stayed at the, at the camp, and we were sitting by the camp, and the fire kind of started going down. And as we're walking, we could hear them because it was a nice, clear night. We could hear them out in the woods. And all of a sudden, I heard Bruce's voice say, I don't know where we're at. <laughs> I believe I was still in the tent at the time. I think I heard Jeremy say, well, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Um, me, Woody, and Jeremy were all kind of by the fire at this point, and we're trying to communicate back and forth, but sound doesn't always travel well, especially when you can't see the origin of the sound. And so we're shouting through the woods, and our voices are kind of bouncing through the woods, and so they really couldn't figure out where we're at. So finally, we start to build up the fire, yeah. and we start throwing more and more wood on the fire, and the fire gets bigger and bigger, and we just keep shouting out, can you see the fire yet? No. I'm like, man, this thing's hot. (laughs) Can you see the fire yet? (laughs) Kind of. I'm like, good Lord, how far are y'all? You know, we're trying to figure all this out. Well, eventually we got the fire big enough where they could see the fire, and it helped them find a trail back to us, right? The problem is, is that what they saw in the natural was a problem until light was brought into the equation. And a lot of times in our lives, we can hear the voices of people trying to help us. But if we're focusing our eyes where the light isn't, doesn't matter what we hear, all we can see around us is what our eyes will allow us to see. And so many times God is speaking to us clearly and loud, but we're not looking in the right direction so we can't see what he wants us to see. And life puts us on an adventure that God has planned for each and every one of us. I hope you all realize that, that you have an adventure that God has planned just for you. Nobody else but you. And some of you are like, well, my life's pretty boring. Well, that's just the adventure God has you on currently. Give it a few days, it'll change. So one thing I've learned about my life, my adventure has changed often. So I want to ask you that question today of what do you see? What do you see? I want to tell you about this young guy named Jeremiah in the Bible. Jeremiah was called, and he was a young guy. And when he was called, he kind of started to throw some excuses. And we're going to look at those excuses. So this is what the Lord gave. The Lord gave this message to Jeremiah. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. How many of us just love that right there by itself, right? I knew you before I, before I formed you. 
God knew each and every one of us, right? This is one of our favorite scriptures to quote because it sounds so majestic. But not many of us actually want to live by that statement. Y'all didn't, y'all didn't get that? Not most of us want to live by, God formed me. God made me. God gave me my situation. Oh, no, we just want to say when somebody else is going through something, God, God formed you. God, he knew this was going to happen before you were born. But when we going through it, God, you formed me in the wrong mama. I don't know what happened. Not me, not me. <laughs> Love you, mommy. <laughs> but when we're going through our problem, we're like, whoa, 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 God, is this, was this what you formed? I knew you before, I, I, knew, I, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart. And appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Oh, sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. Take a second of your time right now and fill in your own blank to I'm too what? I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm too uneducated. I'm too educated. It goes both ways, by the way. I'm too busy. I'm going to help y'all. Anybody who gets an I'm too busy one? You're the schedule of your own calendar. Trust me, come look at mine. But there's so many I can say I'm too, and fill in my own blanks, if I'm just being honest. I'm too ashamed. I'm too worried about my past. I'm too scared of my future. Hey, I'm just hitting on a couple of my own right there real quick. But the Lord replied, don't say Somebody look at your name and say, don't say. I'm to fill in your blank. For you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people. Has anyone ever been scared? Not of someone in a physical sense, but in an emotional sense. I have been way more scared in an emotional sense than I've ever been scared physically. I've always surrounded myself with big people on purpose. (coughs) Jesse. Uh, (laughs) But but he looks scary. (laughs) But I have oftentimes in my life, been scared of people. I've been scared of what people will say about me. I've been scared about how people will portray me. I get nervous sometimes when I'm preaching. How are people perceiving my words? Are they getting what I'm actually saying? Are they hearing their own per- uh, perception of what I'm saying? Because it's just to help everybody in the room for past, the best statement in the world that can free you from everything that burdens you is perception is reality until proven otherwise. And so what someone perceives about you is their reality unless you can change their mind. If you can't change their mind, walk away. You can't be worried about someone else's perception about you. If you're consumed with someone else's perception, you will drive yourself nuts for the rest of your life. For I will be with you, and I will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Exclamation point. Makes you feel good about yourself. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth. And said, look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. 
Others you might build up and plant. And I'm reading all that, and I'm thinking, well, thank you for touching my mouth. But I'm just this person still. Because oftentimes we don't put the confidence in our words. We put the confidence in our past, in our future, in our issue. This is where our confidence seems to be instead of in our confidence in our words and what God has spoken to us to speak back through us. And so we get consumed with everything but what we're supposed to be consumed with. But God says, today I appoint you. And, and tonight, I want to just stand up here and say, I appoint you to do what you're supposed to do. And the question is, what do you see? Somebody look at your neighbor and say, what do you see? Somebody look at your, at your other choice and say, what do you see? I'm hoping nobody's seeing the back of their eyelids yet. If you all go get another cup of coffee. <laughs> look at verse 11. Look at verse 11. Then the Lord said to me, look, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I replied, I see a branch from an almond tree. <laughs> oh, you don't miss it. You got it right. But what do you see? How often does this happen to us in life? God gives us a word. We receive something good, and we open our eyes. What do you see? A tree. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with a tree? It's a tree. It's a branch of a tree, of an almond tree. You can't, this is a soft wood. I can't even do anything with it. It wouldn't even make a good switch. <laughs> and you calling me to go do all this, and then you ask me to open my eyes, and I see the branch of a tree. Who I feel good about this, God. <laughs> and then verse 12, and the Lord said, that's right. And it means that I'm watching, and I will certainly carry out my plans. Have you ever seen something that you just didn't quite understand in the natural? As I'm reading through this, and I am listening to this, and I am dissecting this, the only thing that I could keep coming back to throughout this entire chapter is, I see a tree. I see a tree. I see a tree. What in the world does that have to do with anything that was prophesied over Jeremiah. I'm going to get back to the tree in a little while. He sees a tree. And God's like, that's what you're supposed to see. That's exactly what you're supposed to see. And for some of you, you see your situation. Or you see your problem. Or you see the hardship you're going through. Or you see the victory that you're going through. Whatever it is that you open your eyes to see, you're seeing exactly what you're supposed to see. As long as you're hearing the voice that God has directed you with. I want to go back to that fire in the woods for a second. Any light could have started shining in the woods. We're not that far from the city. We got some crazy people to go frogging at 2 o'clock in the morning that could have started shooting seal beams to the woods. It was to see the right light based off of the right voice. Because the Bible says that the thief shall come like a false light to deceive us and to draw us away from where we're supposed to go. So it's, all, it's very important to understand what you hear to what you see. Even if it's just a tree. Now, I just got back from Panama City. And I may or may not have been speeding on the highway. <laughs> but I was in a group of traffic. 
Uh, so I was going with the flow of traffic, and I realized I was speeding. And for those of you that actually know me, I don't really speed, so I'm not really telling on myself here. Um, and so I went to start to slow down, but I realized I had literally just kind of jumped in front of the person in the right-hand lane, and I can't stand when someone does that to me. They get in front of me and then instantly slow down. So I'm like, man, I really want to slow down, but I really want to make this person mad in front of me. So I'm like trying to like – tap the, the, the decline on the cruise, you know, just a, a little bit at a time so they don't even realize it. And, you know, they just, well, that car's going slow. I'm going to go around them, right? So I'm tapping, I'm tapping. Well, this guy just keeps getting closer and closer. I'm like, yeah, I made him mad. <laughs> and all of a sudden, a truck decides to jump out onto the highway in front of me, which means, guess what? I get to slow down very quickly. Yeah. Now, I could have seen one of two things. I could have seen that a truck just jumped out in front of me and almost caused me to get into an accident because the guy behind me was driving so close to me and I had to hit my brakes very hard. Or I could have seen God provided me a way to slow down faster and not have to worry about what anybody was thinking about me because God put the obstacle in the way to slow me down. So now I don't have to be fearful about the person that's driving behind me because God put an obstacle in my way to slow me down. Now they can't get mad at me. They got to get mad at him. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes that's how God operates in our lives. He will oftentimes put things in our way that to us looks like a tree. But he put it there on purpose so that we can see what he wants us to see. And I'm really going to get back to that tree, I promise. Because a tree has a lot of importance. The author of Hebrews says this about setting our sights on the right things. Most of you know this. Hebrews 12.1. I forgot I put everything on the screen. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a cr- huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Every time I read that scripture to myself, two things happen to me. Number one, I get pumped up like, yeah, God, I'm ready. (laughs) Number two, I start examining myself. Oh, I'm not ready. Oh, I'm going to be out of breath after the first lap. I'm going to be tired. I'm going to catch a leg cramp. I didn't drink enough uh, water last night, God. I'm I'm a... Yeah, I'm not hydrated enough. I started throwing all kind of excuses to that statement about how unready I am to set forth on the race that God has for me. But it gives us the key. It says we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. What do you see? The champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. We don't do this by keeping our eyes on our problem. We don't do this by keeping our eyes on the people surrounded uh, around us. And and we see someone else with all the great things. And we start wishing, well, God, why don't I have great things? Or we see the person that... Got all their kids dressed nice and perfect all the time. And I see my kids running around. And I'm like, London, what are you wearing now? <laughs> this is a regular statement that comes out of our house. London, what are you wearing? It matches. Good enough. <laughs> Life's too busy. Go. <laughs> but we do this. <laughs> We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, who was the champion, who is the champion. And he initiates, and he what perfects our faith. Our faith is always struggling. You know, there's a story in Mark chapter 9 where a guy comes to Jesus and his son is possessed. Y'all remember this story? And he shows up on the scene, and there's this huge argument going on with all the religious people. And Jesus walks back. He says, what y'all arguing about? And all the people are like, yeah, Jesus made it back. And they get all excited. They come up, and they run up to Jesus. And Jesus is like, I don't know why y'all fighting so much. I don't know why y'all arguing so much. 
And they're like, well, there's this kid and he's possessed. And Jesus asks a really interesting question. And it just jumped out at me the other day as I was reading this. He says, well, how long has he been like this? Why did Jesus even have to ask that question? For no other reason than for, other, for everybody around him to understand the situation. There was a crowd of people starting to rush in. And Jesus like, well, how long has he even been like that? Oh, he's been like that since birth. Really? Huh. And the guy's like, if you could do anything for him, it'd be great. And Jesus like, oh, time out. What you mean, if? Anyone who believes shall receive. See, we are a lot like that dad. God, if you can do something for my situation. God, if you can help me with I'm too whatever. God, if you will put me out of my problem, it would be great. If you could just do a little something for me, God. I overheard Brandy talking to someone this morning on the phone. She's like, man, she just recently read something about, or, or I think you had a devotion or something about, what will we do if we really believe our prayers? And this guy's like, God, I believe, but help my unbelief. See, Jesus is the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Don't ever beat yourself up because you might not have enough. Just learn how to say, I got this much, God. You got to fill in the rest. I'm too young, God. No problem. I'm going to touch your mouth and I'm going to show you a tree. God, I can't handle this. I can't do this. It's okay. I'm going to touch your mouth and I'm going to show you a tree. God, I don't know if I want to take tackle this thing that you have before me. It's okay. I'm going to touch your mouth and I'm going to show you a tree. I'm going to change what you're saying, and I'm going to show you a tree. I'm going to change how you profess things, and I'm going to show you a tree. I'm going to change how you keep verbalizing your life, and I'm going to show you a tree. I would rather you be honest with your words than keep hiding behind your words. I would rather you speak what you're feeling. I'd rather you go where you're saying you want to go. I'd rather you listen to yourself because I'm going to show you a tree. Verse 3, think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. What do you see? What do you see? Jesus saw the joy of his pain so that me and you can look to him one day and not give up. And not give up. So I'm going to ask you one more time, what do you see? Do you see all the problems around you? I do too. Do you see some crazy stuff happening around you? I do too. Do you see your life maybe going in circles? I do too. Do you see yourself questioning what God's doing right now? I do too. Do you question why is things happening, God, that shouldn't be happening? I do too. But I know that he didn't go through what he went through just so I get weary. Just so I sit in my house and worry as I'm watching the news. Just so that when I see the bills coming in, I'm freaking out because the money's not there. I don't get weary when my, when my job is taking up too much of my time. I won't get weary when I'm f- fighting with my kids and frustrated that they're not getting it. I'm not going to get weary when things aren't going the way I want them to go. I'm not going to get weary when my core engine light comes on on the core and I don't have the money to put it in the shop. I'm not going to get weary when things are going bad because he set the endurance for me ahead of time. And I'm not going to give up. So let's look at that one more time. The Lord said to me, look, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I replied, I see a branch from an almond tree. I see a branch from an almond tree. So I had to go do some digging to figure this one out. But the almond tree was the first plant 
to start to sprout in spring. Jeremiah was coming from a dead season to a new spring of life where things were changing and things were coming back where they were supposed to be. If you get stuck looking at your plants in December and the winter, you will forget that in the spring they're going to produce something brand new. They're going to start showing you something brand new. They're going to have something of beauty to them again. They're going to show you the fruit that they bear. They're going to have something of substance again. So not only does he see the almond tree, but the almond tree is so cool because the almond tree, as it begins to bud and as it begins to grow, since it's the first tree to do it, it gets its flowers first. And so you see its beauty And then as the flowers begin to go, the almonds begin to show up. And the almonds show you that you have some substance now. So now you go from receiving the beauty of what God has for you, and now you get the substance of what God is going to provision for you. So when God says, what do you see? Jeremiah goes from, I see a kid who's scared to death to do what you want me to do. But I see something beautiful is about to happen. And I see that you're about to show me what provision really looks like. And I know that the seasons are changing. And I want to encourage you tonight to know that your season is changing. Your season is changing. Don't get focused on what you see. Get focused on what God asks you to see. And that's why God says, that's right. And it means that I'm watching, and I will certainly carry out all my plans. You know, the King James Version says, and I am working hastily for you. God is doing everything behind the scenes. Don't get stuck on what you see in the natural Learn to see what God wants you to see, even if it's only a tree. Because that tree shows you that there's a change in the season. And God's about to do something in your life that's going to change your season and move you where he wants you to be. Amen. Amen. I hope that got you like it got me because it, uh, it rocked me when I heard that word. And uh, like I said, I put my spin to it, but I believe that we need to see what God wants us to see and not see what the news media wants us to see and not see what Facebook wants us to see and Instagram and all these other things. We just need to see what God wants us to see. So the next time you get discouraged, just open your Bible. Open your Bible and let him show you what he wants you to see. Go go ahead and stand as I bless you as we leave tonight. I got y'all out five minutes early. Oh, it's ten minutes early according to this clock. I'm looking at the big clock right there. Father, I thank you for your words tonight. Lord, I thank you for using me to speak to your people. And Father, I know that for some of us, What we see is very difficult. It's not easy. It's not just as easy as saying, okay, God, I'm going to change what I see. God, for some of us, it's going to be like that race. It's going to be like that endurance test. But I ask that you help us see Jesus. He's everywhere as we go. He's in everything we do. And if we'll learn to train our ears to hear from him, we'll be able to see everything he's doing and follow him on our best path. Father, I thank you that there's a change of the seasons coming. And, Lord, we will see your beauty and your provision move in our lives. And I thank you for what you're doing in each and every person. In Jesus' name, amen.